Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to set up your gradebook and how to organize and maneuver grades in Canvas. Grades are one of the most non-intuitive things about Canvas um, and there are a couple different places that you need to access to set up your gradebook. So first you'll need to be uh, sign into Canvas and go to the course where you'd like to set up your gradebook. The very first thing we want to do is go down to settings in our Canvas page. Um, and so at the bottom, you're going to have a couple of options that are going to impact your gradebook. So one of them, um, if you, you go down, you'll notice we have all these options. At about halfway down the page, you'll notice that there's a grading scheme that you can enable. Um, so if you want to enable a grading screen, scheme, you can click Enable a Grading screen, Scheme, and you'll click and you can set up a plus minus grading system and percent values there. And this way, Canvas will calculate your grades um, you know exactly how you want it and you can match it to your syllabus. For example, this doesn't have an A, uh, a, a plus, it just has an A. So if you want to add, you know, um, an A plus, you can edit it by clicking the pencil and you can insert an A plus range here at the top and you can maybe say an A plus is going to be 97 um, and above and so on and so forth and you can click save and now you've got a grading scheme for your gradebook and for your assignments. So this is in settings, right? So this is our first stop. And then if you go down to the bottom, there's this little thing that says fewer or more options, which I, I think is crazy that it's hidden. This are really, really important aspects of your course here. Um, and they also have some hidden features for your gradebook. So um, you'll notice there's some different things about announcements and stuff. But again, about halfway through, it says hide totals and student grade summary and hide grade distribution graphs. So if you don't want students to see the grade distribution for the class, you might want to check hide grade distribution graphs from students. This means that if you give an exam, students will be able to see the entire spread of grades anonymously, of course, um, in the class. And they'll be able to see that the average grade for that exam was a B or a C or an A. And so they can see the distribution graphs for the entire class. So if you don't want them to see the average grades for you know that assignment for all the students, you'll need to check this. Next, it says hide totals in student grade summary. If you're someone who likes to um, you know, work on the grades um, and then post them for students at certain points in the semester, you might want to hide the totals in the student grade summary so they can see their individual scores on their assignments, but maybe they don't see the overall grade. This is especially important if you do any specialty curving um, or other, you know, more advanced uh, features than Canvas has to offer with your gradebook. That way students can still see the assignments, but they won't be misguided by that student total grade um, if you're calculating your grades a little bit differently than Canvas does or you're waiting to put you know bigger and heavier assignments or participation points in toward the end of the semester. So again you can check or uncheck these in the settings sections where it says more options at the very bottom. Once you've decided what you want students to you know be able to see or not see you're going to click update course details and that is your first step to creating your gradebook. <laughs> the next stop is assignments. Assignments is where you're going to create categories and if you want weights. Weights are not automatically added in Canvas, so it's just a strict point value system. Now, if you want weights like I've got here, you'll need to enable weight, weighted grades for your assignments. So that's gonna be in this top right hand corner here with these three dots, that hidden menu. And here you'll see I've checked assignment groups weight. So I'll go ahead and click on this. Traditionally, it's unchecked. So almost all Canvas courses, um, actually all Canvas courses, um, do not have weighted grades. So if you want to weight them, you'll have to check this. And then you can go through and add the percentages that you want. So here I've just put as a random example, 10% for participation, 10 for lectures, 40 for assignments, 10 for the group project, and 30 for exams. So I can save this and I can see the percentage right there, um, you know, in my assignments area. The next thing I want to make sure is that all my groups are, are made. For example, if I want to add another group, I'll just click the plus group sign here and add a new group. Um, if I want to add an assignment, I'll click the plus assignment and I can add a new assignment 
um, just like you know you do usually for assignments. So if you need help adding groups or assignments, please check out our a detailed look into Canvas assignments um, video that explains the groups and assignments in more detail. Now, if you want just a empty column in your gradebook, for example, maybe um, your participation is also going to include attendance. If you just want an empty column in the gradebook, so something that you're, you know, students are not going to submit to, you're just going to input a number into it, um, then you, instead of clicking Add Assignment, what you'll do is in the gray assignment group uh, bar, you'll click the little plus sign, and here um, you can decide what it is, but you want to keep it as an assignment, and here we're just going to put maybe attendance. Now there is an attendance feature on Canvas, so you can use the attendance tool there and it will calculate it and do everything there and it's super great and nice. But if you just want a, a raw number score, um, then this is the way to do it. So let's say there's going to be 100 points for attendance throughout the semester, or maybe there's going to be 160 because there's 10 points a week and there's 16 weeks or whatever you want to do. Um, you can do this and once you hit save, this is going to create a blank column in your gradebook that you're going to put a number value into. Now if you want students to see it, you'll have to publish it. Um, if not, you can leave it unpublished. Now a great way to check and make sure that this is an empty column for your gradebook is to click on attendance, the name of it, and open it up and make sure that it says submitting nothing. So this means students are not submitting anything, it's just a column in your gradebook where you're going to put some numbers in. So that's a great example there um, for, for an empty column in your gradebook, which is a very common question we get uh, from faculty. So another note about this is that this is not going to look the same for students as it does for you. I'm going to click on student view so you can see what I mean. When you go to student view, you can see the overdue assignments, undated, past, and upcoming. So this is the show by a date. This is the default for students. Now if they click show by type, then it will show the percentages and the organization that you've created. But again, the default is by the date. You'll also notice that when students click on grades, their gradebook is going to look very different than yours. You'll notice that they'll have the assignment name, the score out of, and, um, and any feedback you've left. So if you click on on this, it'll take them to the feedback area and it'll show them all the comments you've made, all the media, and they can leave you new files, new comments, and new media as well. So that's really nice for students. Students also have a what if score in their gradebook, which is super cool. So show saved what if scores. Students can click here and say, okay, if I get an eight on this assignment, a seven on this one, and so on and so forth, what will my grade overall grade be? And this is called a what, a what if grade. So then they can revert to their actual score and they can see the details. They can also print their grades. So the student gradebook looks completely different than ours. So I wanted to take a minute and show it to you. So again, if you leave any feedback or assignments, it'll pop up here and students can click on it and see your feedback, which is super great for the student. They can also see their overall score unless you hit it in settings of your course. So I'm going to go ahead and leave student view and now we're going to look at our actual gradebook. So you can access this um, in our your sandbox by clicking or in your course. You can click grades and that will take you right to your gradebook. So the first few things you'll notice is you've got three drop down menus here and you've got a little settings cog on the right hand corner. Let's go ahead and start here at the settings cog. You'll notice here that there's um, this automatically apply grade for missing submissions. Um, and you can set that as zero or a hundred or whatnot. You'll need to make sure that this setting is what you want before you publish your course. I've had a lot of faculty come into the Faculty Development Center virtually and say, hey, I don't know why, but Canvas is putting all these zeros everywhere for students when they don't submit an assignment. I didn't put those zeros there. How did they get there? Well, the default setting for Canvas is that you're gonna automatically as assign a zero for any missing submissions and that's a default setting for Canvas. So if you don't want that, you'll want to make sure that this is unchecked. Next, um, you'll want to check your automatically applied deductions for late submissions. So this is not defaulted, um, but you can always you can do 1% per day or per hour and you can even set that the lowest they can get on on an assignment that they turn in late is 50%. So you can also set automatic deductions for late work, which is really, really nice and convenient. 
if you like that sort of thing. You can also select grade posting pol policy automatically or manual. This means that students will automatically get the grade the moment you enter it into Canvas. Manually posting grades means you will input the grade in Canvas and you will always release it to the student. So if you do not manually release their grade every time you insert a grade in the gradebook, students will not be able to see that grade. So if you're the type of person who wants to grade everything and, and manually release it, that's great. If you're the type of person who might forget to manually release it and you just want students to get their grade when you input it, automatically posting grades might be a great thing for you. Um, advanced is allow final grade override, so you can also adjust final grades if you'd like to as well. So these are the general settings you can do for your gradebook, um, which are really important, um, and you always want to double check before you publish your course. The next thing we can do is kind of organize our gradebook or view it in different ways. So the gradebook uh, drop down here, you've got learning mastery paths if you're going to use that. You also have individual view, and this will allow you to see the student's grade very similar to how the student does it. So if you have a student come by your office hours and want to see their grade, you can click individual view and you can show just that student's grade. Now if you want to see it in your gradebook, you can always just search here, you know, that student and only that student will pop up. So you can also do that there, which is super, super nice. You can also view gradebook history. So if you accidentally change someone's grade and didn't mean to, you can always go back in grade history and search for that. The next thing you can do is view. You can arrange your assignments by A to Z, due date, for example, this would be by due date, um, points lowest to highest, or by modules if you're organizing and grading week by week. Um, I really like to organize mine by modules, and that way I can work, you know, that week on grading the last week's, um, it, you know, assignments, and I can move module to module um, grading. So that's another way that you can do it there as well. Um, the filters you can do is you can also filter by assignment group, so you can look at only the exams, you can look at only the participation, um, and then you'll only be able to see the grades for that. So the filters are also really nice. You can also filter by modules and sections if you have multiple course sections. You can also check statuses for different things as well. And so you can filter by late, missing, resubmitted, dropped, or excused. And so you can change the color of these as well. And so you can kind of organize your gradebook and determine what these um, you know, color codes mean uh, for the gradebook. Um, and then finally, you can add a notes column. This note column is just for you. So students don't see this notes column. Um, so this could, you could say, hey, you know, maybe you can put missing assignments there, maybe you could put a note. Um, this notes column is just for the instructor, so that's really great. The next thing you have actions, you can import grades if you have a CSV file, and you can export or download a CSV file of your gradebook to store it offline, which I highly recommend doing every couple of weeks. Next, there are more things in the gradebook that you can't see. Up in the top right corner, you can expand some help about the gradebook. So how do you use it? How do you enter and edit grades? post grades, view assignments, speed grader, and more Canvas guides. So you can pop that open if you need some more help. And then also you have little hidden functions in all of the areas here um, in Canvas. So you notice when I scroll over it, there's these three little hidden menus. And the hidden menus are infamous for Canvas. So here, the hidden menu for student name, you can sort by last or first name, A to Z. You can display their name first or last name. You can um, sort by SSID or login. You can see inactive enrollments as well. And so you can sort the students in different ways. For the total, you can also sort grade low to high. It might be really helpful to sort the grades low to high so you can see your students who are struggling and reach out to them. You can also move this total to the end or to the beginning of your grades, up to you where you want to see that running total. Next, um, in any of the assignment areas, when you click those three dots, you can sort assignments by low to high. So again, you can check on those students who are falling behind. You can access the speed grader so that you can do some grading, which I talk extensively about the speed grader in another video. And this is my favorite thing about the Canvas gradebook, this message students who. If you click message students who, you can click on those who haven't been graded and say, hey, I'm gonna be grading these next week. 
Um, or you can say scored less than. So if you have students who scored less than 50%, um, maybe you want to to change, um, you know, what this says. So maybe I'll say here 50. Um, and then here you can change the subject line. It will send an individual message to the students. Usually it would have a list of students here, um, but since there's no students in my uh, sandbox, it's not showing it. But it'll show all your little students here, and you can click or unclick them. And it'll show you who scored less than, and you can send a, an individual message to all of those students at once. Um, so you could be like, hey, just checking in, you know, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so you can send that message um, to students. So that's my favorite attrib hidden attribute of the Canvas gradebook. Next, you can curve grades. So if you're interested in that, um, you know, please look on to the Canvas guides for curving your grades and how to do that. You can also set a default grade. So let's say you have an assignment um, that's completion, not completion, and you know everybody did it. You can just do a default grade of, you know, points for everyone. Um, you can post this no grades to hide or post is if you do that automatic or manual posting. You can hide the grades while you work and then unhide them and post them for students to see, which can be really nice. You can enter the grades as points or percentages and you can do a grade posting policy for just that assignment. So we saw in the little cog that you can do automatic or manual grading for the entire grade book for all of your assignments, but you can also choose to set this one as manual and keep the rest as automatic. So this would be just for that participation assignment. And when you set that, it'll say manual. And so then once you have uh, student grades to input, um, then it'll pop a little eyeball here that says, oops, students can't see this that's hidden. So if I wanna, if I wanna post it, I'll click post the grade and it will say, what do you wanna post, everyone or graded? And I'll just do the ones that are graded. I'll go ahead and post and you'll see the little orange dot telling you what, what it's going to post and then it's ready to go and now it's posted. Um, so those are all the little hidden features you can do as well. So you'll notice that's for all of the attendance. Now here, you'll notice that these um, can't be adjusted. So these are assignments, but here it says 10% of grade, 10% of grade, 40%, etc. This is your grade, these are your grade categories, and you can't get rid of those in your grade book. They'll always be there, and they'll calculate kind of a running percentage um, for students for each one of those grade categories that you've created. So you can sort them low to high, um, but that's all you can do with these because these are, again, your automatically calculated um, grade categories. And then you can have an override grade here um, for the end. So right now it says 80 B minus, and you can say, actually, there's a problem here. And you can override it to a 75, which is going to be a C because we set our grading scheme in the settings. So again, this is your grade book. Um, I know it's a little bit messy to set up. You've got your, you know, in your course, you've got to go to settings, you've got to go to assignments, and you've got to go to grades to access and set up your gradebook in Canvas. But that's why we're here. We're here to help you through it. If you have any questions, you know, reach out to the FDC. We'd be happy to help you set up your gradebook. You can also schedule one-on-one -on -one appointments um, with FDC or the OET, um, and, and we can help you, you know, set up your gradebook one-on-one um, -on -one and see what you need to do as well. So I hope that this really in-depth uh, in view of the Canvas Gradebook has been helpful, and I hope you have a wonderful day.